Okay, so we have figured out that the angry birds are gonna need a little help from calculus in order to take down the pigs. We need to determine at what moment we should tap the screen so that this yellow bird is gonna hit the house in the desired location, which is right around here. So we know that we need to tap the screen at some point when the bird is on the downward trajectory so that it's aimed towards the house. So we know that the peak of this path is at x equals four, which is gonna give us a horizontal tangent line. Now, since my drawing's not done to scale, we aren't entirely sure that that's not gonna hit the house. So I would suggest we start with the horizontal trajectory and then work our way down. At x equals five, we've got a line that's moving a little bit closer to the house. Once again, this isn't drawn to scale. At x equals six, we have another tangent line that would appear to be hitting the target, but once again, we're gonna have to do some math to verify that. At x equals seven and eight, I think we're gonna get lines too steep. They're just gonna hit the ground, so we aren't gonna worry about those. But the goal is to take our flight function, we're gonna need to find the derivative, because tangent lines are a line through a point with an instantaneous slope which is to say that we're gonna to need to find the derivative of this function so we know the slope of this line, or this line, at the point, either x equals four, x equals five, or x equals six. We're gonna focus on these three points. So the first step is gonna to be to simplify this function because I don't feel like doing the chain rule, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't either. So what we're gonna do is we know that x minus four quantity squared can be re re rewritten as x minus four times x minus four. Then you add on the 16. So if we were to multiply this out, we would get x squared minus eight x plus 16, and you add on the 16 from before. And we can't forget about this negative sign out front. We're gonna have to distribute it throughout everything in the parentheses. Then we're left with negative x squared minus a minus becomes a positive 8x. And this becomes a minus 16. And we gotta bring down the 16 from before. So since we have a minus 16 and a plus 16, we know this is gonna cancel out. So then our simplified flight function is gonna be negative x squared plus 8x. So this function represents this green curve. So now that we have our function and it's been simplified, the first step to determining at what point we're going to tap the screen is we need to find the coordinates. So we need to figure out what is the y value when x is 4? What is the y value when x is 5? And what is the y value when x is 6? So the way we do that is we plug in four to our function. So f of four, which is gonna be negative four squared plus eight times four. So we know negative four squared is just negative 16 and eight times four is 32. Negative 16 plus 32 leaves us with 16. So we know that the coordinate of this point is four comma 16. Then we need to determine what is the coordinate at x equals five. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna plug five into our equation and then simplify. We know that negative five squared is just negative 25 and eight times five is 40. This is gonna simplify the number 15. So our coordinate is five, 15, right here. And f of six is gonna be negative six squared plus eight times six, which is gonna give us negative 36 plus 48, which is going to simplify to 12. So our last coordinate point is six, 12. So we know that these three coordinates are gonna be essential to solving this problem. So that is step one. 
So, now that we know the coordinates for each of these tangent lines, where they lie on this curve, we need to determine what is the derivative at those points so we know what the slope is of these lines. So the first step is we're going to have to find the derivative of the function f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x. Well, this is just the power rule. So we know that f prime of x is going to be negative 2x plus 8. And once again, in order to find the slope at each point, we're just going to plug in the values. So we know that f prime of 4 is going to be negative 2 times 4 plus 8. Negative 2 times 4 gives us negative 8, and plus 8 gives us 0. And this makes sense because we knew that at x equals 4, we had a horizontal tangent line. So our slope at 4 is 0. We're going to do the same thing for 5. Which is going to give us negative 10 plus 8 going to reduce to 2. So our slope at x equals 5 is negative 2. Then lastly we'll do the same thing with 6. It's going to give us negative 12 plus 8, which leaves us with 4. So our slope at 6 is negative 4. So now what's involved with this is that we have found the slope of these tangent lines at particular points. Now that we have the slope of a line and the point on a line, if you all remember, we can now write the equation of the line. So step three is gonna be find the equation. So if we all remember, we know the formula y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 will give us the equation of any line. This is called point-slope form. So we now have the m's, which are over here, and we have a point x1 and y1, which are these right here. So we know that the equation at x equals 4 for our tangent line is going to be given by y minus our y1, which is 16. I'm going to set that equal to the slope at 4, which is 0, times x minus our x1, is 4. We simplify this. We know that we get the equation y equals 16. So the tangent line at x equals 4 is y equals 16. Then we know at x equals 5, we do the same thing. So y minus our y1, which is going to be 15, is going to equal our slope, which is negative 2 times x minus our x1, which is 5. We factor, out, or excuse me, distribute out that negative 2. We're left with negative 2x plus 10. Bring that 15 over to the other side. And we're left with negative 2x plus 25. At x equals 6, we have our y minus y1, which is 12 going to equal to negative 4, our slope, times x minus 6. Once again, we're going to distribute out our slope, and then move this 12 to the other side. So we have our three equations now. We now know that at x equals 4, we have y equals 16. At x equals 5, we have y equals negative 2x plus 25. And at x equals 6, we have y equals negative 4x plus 36. So we now have the equation for these three lines. And the next step is we're going to need to determine which one of them contains this point. So the crucial piece of information that I've left out until this point is the value of that point. So let's say that the point of impact is at 10, 5. So that looks about right because we know that this is 8. So let's just say that that's at 10, 5. So what we need to determine is which one of these three equations 
contains the point 10, 5. Well, we can already eliminate x equals 4 because we know that y equals 16 does not contain the point 10, 5. So that's an easy elimination. So we know that this one will not work. Now let's try it x equals 5. So the way we check to see if a point is a solution is just by plugging it in. So we need to determine if 5 equals, I like to put a question mark over it until I know, negative 2 times 10 plus 25. We know that negative 2 times 10 gives us negative 20. Negative 20 plus 25 does indeed equal 5. So that means that our bird needs to use this equation right here. This one's the important one. So that means that we need to tap our screen as our bird moves by the point x equals 5 so that it takes this trajectory to strike the target at the point that'll take down the pigs.